like the biggest hopeless failure ever. Like, frankly, I don't think they really care about you. They care more about... Hi everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about how I got into Boston University as an international student and as someone who had a private counselor by her side. So I'm going to be telling you guys the tips and advice I got from them as well as what I learned from this experience, how I went about it, and what I wouldn't repeat looking back from now. I applied to their business school, the Question School of Business. Also, this video is divided into a few parts. First, we have academics. And yes, I didn't submit any SAT or ACT scores, which I would elaborate more on later. Number two, the BU supplementary essay. Number three, the common app essay. Number four, extracurricular activities. And number five, how law of attraction and manifestation has really helped me get to where I am right now. As cheesy as that sounds, it did play quite a major role in helping me throughout the process. So let's just get going. Numero uno, academics. These are where IB students are in absolute luck because I think it was just last year, Boston University announced that IB students are actually exempted from submitting their SAT or ACD scores, so they do not need to if they have the IB diploma. But I think because of the pandemic, the SAT or ACT is now optional and you just need to submit your transcript and TOEFL or IELTS. But how it worked for me was that I submitted my IB predicted grades as well as my high school transcript, which is my grades from grade 9 to 12. I have predicted grades, it was a 35 above, so it was pretty good. High school transcript was also pretty good, so I think that definitely played a role. At the end of the day, you still need to submit your final IB grade. They didn't specify a certain grade you need to meet, but then they did say that they had the right to withdraw your application if it didn't meet their expectations or standards, but I do not know what their expectation or standard is. Me submitting the IB grade does not mean that I did not do any of the standardized tests. I actually did the ACT thrice, and it was an absolute nightmare, I tell you multiple choice questions under time pressure and that too like they have really long questions so it was just a real handicap for me and I believe a lot of people also feel the same way. Number one, the most important lesson I learned is that hard work doesn't equal to good results here. You, what you actually need are like strategies and a smart way to maneuver your way through. Beginning from even picking if you're going to do the SAT or ACT and then how to do it efficiently, how to read quickly, how to answer your questions fast. That is what you need to learn. That golden rule became evident to me because I started learning at the end of 10th grade. I did my first practice test actually. My scores did increase as I went through from one exam to another, but the increase was just around like two points. At the end of the day, I still ended up with just like 27, I think, which is really, really bad. Added on to that pressure, my counselor was like, hey, you're not going anywhere with those scores. I don't think you should even apply, give it up. I felt like the biggest hopeless failure ever and that just really discouraged me and put me down. So if you do come across that type of person while you're applying to college, ignore it. Like, freaking ignore it. It's I regret not ignoring it and just like allowing it to let me down. Like it did ignite some sort of fire to keep going, to learn more, to take more tests. But, you know, at the end of the day, I, it really did discourage me and it also discouraged me from applying to some schools that I really wanted to go to and I, like, the fact that I didn't even try because of someone else is, like, really saddening now that I look back to that experience. But yeah, if you come across a person like that, please ignore and just go do you because I feel like no one else knows you better than yourself. And if you know what your strengths and weaknesses are, you can really pull through everything and maybe your essay would be bomb as heck and you could literally get into the school you thought you would never get into. Just wrap that up, if you're doing the standardized tests, and number one, please choose carefully ACT or SAT. Number two, strategize and smartly maneuver your way through. Number three, don't give up, don't be discouraged, keep going. <laughs> Next, 
the BU Supplementary Essay. This one is actually quite fun to write. You honestly just need to be excited about going to the school, like going to Boston University, like literally imagining that you're already there, what activities are you going to do, what type of people are you going to meet, be genuinely excited about going there. You have to write around 250 to 300 words and the question was, what about Boston University really excites you? So that's such a genuine question, I feel. The biggest tip I have for you guys is to visit Boston University's website, Instagram, Facebook, and wherever you can find them and find a detail, an event, a class, um, a building, whatever that attaches you to that institution and write about it. That's going to be making you unique. Like, that's what you want to go there for. That's what you are excited for. I think the most unique point for me was, so they have this like, they have this website where students and professors and the school itself can like upload articles, journals, um, updates, news, whatever, and I found um, this article about TEDxBU, so it was actually organized by one of their business students. So it's such a coincidental match for me that I was able to write about it, because number one, I'm applying to their business school, number two, I fortunately got the experience to talk for TEDx youth in my school last year, and number three, I just love TED Talks, like I love, love, love. So I got to write about that and I got to associate it and link it with the school. So that one was a really huge point I put in. Number two, second most important tip I have for you while writing this essay is to look for classes you are interested in through their class list in the school's website or the BU Hub. So BU Hub is their general education requirement. Like these are classes that you are required to take, but there are so many interesting classes you can take that you can literally pick out one that interests you the most and then look for who the lecturer or professor is and then research more about it in the BU's website or even, you know, you could Google the name of the professor because usually they're authors or whatever and they would have their own LinkedIn page. So you can really write about them. So you could go like, I'm very interested to take this class thought by this person. I can't wait to learn from this person because this person has, for example, started a very successful eco-friendly, sustainable business that I am very inspired by, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever. It's going to show that you're very interested in the school, about learning there, about, you know, getting involved. Number three, the Common App essay, everyone's personal favorite. This one is the most time consuming, so start early, you won't regret it. Seriously though. To make it easier, I have five solid tips for you. Number one, it is okay to write a lot of drafts, but Please do not delete any of them. Keep it in one document, in separate documents, whatever works for you, but don't delete them. So I personally am a very indecisive person and I actually like write about my whole entire life, but obviously that is impossible and I really couldn't pick a certain experience that I really wanted to write about. So what I did was I wrote a lot of drafts. I wrote around 10 drafts and they all had a very different experience and topic I wrote about but I highlighted very important phrases that I really liked from each essay and what I found was they all shared the same recurring thought and they all had the same underlying theme so that was the theme or the thought I wrote about at the end and that was really helpful for me because I was really indecisive Two, write about something you are really proud of and something that really encapsulates you. I think that is very, very important because the tone would automatically be genuine and really shows your passion for whatever you're writing for. And that is what is going to differentiate you from everyone else. That is like concrete evidence that you aren't ripping off someone else's essay, that you aren't being helped by someone, that you're not paying anyone to write your essay. That is what makes you you. Number three, cut to the chase, get to the point. I was really fortunate to have this qualified person help me with a um, certain part of my essay. What he said really stuck by me and this is something I really uh, kept in mind while writing the entire essay. He said, treat every word like gold, 
because those college admissions officers are going to read thousands and millions of essays. They're going to be bored at some point and they're not going to want to waste time. So a really short and sweet essay is better than a long essay that is just empty and not rich in detail. You don't want to make it so general, so generic. You really want to like make it come alive. Instead of saying, I am curious, show how you're curious. For example, oh, I started wondering why I couldn't uh, freely express my thoughts and I started to do this and that. That just sh shows so much more about you than just that one line. That's something I really had to keep in mind while writing the essay. Number four, have a killer first line that will grab the attention of the reader right off the bat. This is basically the person reading your essay's first impression of you, so that's really important. Um, what I did to enhance this first line was I actually started the first line with something and my last line actually connected to the first line. So it kind of like answered what the first line was all about. So I think that cyclical structure is a good way to go, but if you have any other way, I think it would be good as well. Five, another really helpful advice I got from him. I'm just going to quote him. He said, 5% of your essay is about your accomplishments and 95% is about indirectly telling them how and what you can contribute to the school. So I think at first I was really confused about this as well, but as I went on, I realized that, yeah, okay, that does make sense because quite frankly, I don't think they really care about you. <laughs> I think they care more about how the school is going to benefit from admitting you into their school, right? Maybe a new fresh perspective in class or you know, continuing on TEDxB or whatever. Last point that I really want to like remind you of is write an essay that speaks volumes about you and does justice to you as a person, to the accomplishments and to the good you have done. Just really, really do that. And um, yes. Yo, we're about to talk about extracurricular activities. I'm gonna keep this really short. One thing I regret doing is including activities that I wasn't really passionate about, that didn't really make me, me. So for example, I played the guitar for a bit and I took lessons and I did play in a concert and stuff like that, but I don't even play anymore and I only played for about like five months or three months, I don't know. But I did include that in the list. And it really didn't speak anything about me, so it just showed how I was really like scattered as an individual. Like my interests are still scattered, and I'm not a solid person yet. To conclude that, quality is more important than quantity for the amount of ECAs you want to list. And also, um, when describing your ECAs, use very powerful keywords like lead, um, initiated. And also use numbers, use statistics. For example, you helped build 40 homes. The 40 is such a huge impact to the reader because that just shows really tangible, evident impact that you created. And I also suggest that you include a lot of community and service that links to what you want to study about. So for example, you're going to be studying IT and your extracurricular activity would be teaching kids in the villages how to use a computer. It just shows that you're really passionate about what you're going to learn. The last point, manifestation and law of attraction. I love the idea of this. As you all know, the whole college application process is just really stressful. So what I did was that I practiced manifestation. I acted like I was already in the school. I acted like I was literally already there. I couldn't wait to do all the things I could do. I would get excited over the classes, the clubs, the people I'd meet, the city. And this links to the point of law of attraction. Law of attraction is basically the idea that what you focus on is what is going to come to you. As unbelievable as that sounds, I believe in that. <laughs> because it's such a long and grueling process, I really don't know how people could go on without a really strong and positive mindset that will keep you on your high. So that is all that I have. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it helped you in a way or another. And if you want me to read my essays or share some more tips about my experience, just comment down below. <laughs> and if no one comments, that would be really awkward. But yes, I would gladly, gladly help you because the YouTube community has really helped me a lot while I was applying to uni. You really do not need to pay thousands of bucks for a counselor. 
and for information I mean it would help you a lot but the YouTube community is also really really helpful if you don't want to pay for that go to YouTube I will gather all the videos that has really helped me when I was applying in a playlist and you could check them out in the link I placed down below or in the iCard up above so you could check them out to wrap it all up just do your best and give your all because you'll never know what will happen apply to that school you've always wanted to go to even though you don't feel confident just do it you'll never know there's no harm in applying even if you don't get in you could always go back to yourself and say hey at least you tried maybe it's not meant to be and it's just going to give you so much peace of mind and thank you for watching bye see you next week cheers from my coffee